Hi and welcome to this Leaving Cert Higher Level Trigonometry video. In this video we're going to specifically look at the unit circle and using the unit circle to find the solution to equations. So now let's talk about the unit circle. So the unit circle is a circle with centre 0, 0 and radius 1. So this is our unit circle there, so-called because the radius is one unit. So you can see some points on it that are quite obvious. So if it has a center 0, 0 and radius 1, we have our point 1, 0 here, our point 0, 1 here, our point minus 1, 0 here, and our point 0, minus 1 here. So uh, this simple circle is an easy way to work with angles and ratios. When I talk in ratios, I mean my trigonometric ratios. So here is another example of a circle where, well, this is still the unit circle. We can see our radius here is given as length 1. So it says let P, X, Y be any point on the circle as shown. And we have a triangle here where we just have O, P, C. And it's a right angle triangle. So we drop a line vertically down from P to create that right angle. So we have this triangle here. Uh, if that point P is X, Y, that gives us our X along the X axis and Y, this vertical height here. Uh, it's a unit circle, so we have one as our hypotenuse in this triangle. So working with our sine cos tan, so our theta is here, this becomes opposite, this becomes adjacent, this is hypotenuse. Um, how do you remember sine cos tan? So if you're using sa katoa or if you're using any little phrase to help you write that up so we can see it. So if we work out cos adjacent over hypotenuse, that's a, adjacent is x, hypotenuse is 1. So x over 1 is cos. Okay, so that's my adjacent over hypotenuse. x over 1 is just x, so it actually gives me cos of theta is just x. Uh, similarly, we can work with sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse, and sine of theta is y over 1, so sine of theta is just y. So therefore, the coordinates of p, instead of being x, y, we could actually say in this unit circle that they're actually cos theta, sine theta. So what we have here is sine theta is the y coordinate of p, cos theta is the x coordinate of p, and then we end up with tan as the gradient, um, or another word for gradient is slope okay, of op. So just take a look what that looks like for a second. So there's p and here's our angle. So as we move that angle, um, as we move p around, what we're seeing is we're getting a bigger, bigger angle, um, but each of those points can actually be written as cos theta, sine theta. So the point P can, in each case, be written as cos theta, sine theta, where theta is the angle between the positive sense of the x-axis and the line OP. So bringing you back to your formula and tables book again on page 13, I'm actually going to focus on this little diagram here. And what we have here is actually our unit circle. So we have a unit circle given with the angle A. It gives us the point on the circle, which is cos A sine A. It gives us the four points on the circle that we'd already pointed out at the very start. So 1, 0, 0, 1, minus 1, 0, and 0, minus 1. Um, and basically what this tells us is when we have the unit circle, this x-axis is actually the cos axis and the y-axis is actually our sine axis. So we can do a lot with this unit circle and it can help us to answer a lot of different questions. So the last thing I want to point out on this page before we move forward is this formula here, which is the tan of angle A is equal to sine A over cos A. I want to work with this a little bit more just to explain where we got this idea of the slope. Um, because cos and sine, really obvious, well hopefully really obvious from this unit circle, I want to talk a little bit more about tan. So. The formula is tan is equal to sine over cos. So just for us to get a better understanding, I just has 
have a little right angle triangle here uh, with my angle A marked. So here is my opposite side, here is my hypotenuse, and here is my adjacent. So if I'm talking about the sine of A, so I have, I use Sakatoa to help, Sakatoa or whatever rhyme you use, it's perfect. So sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Cos is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Here I have sine A over cos A. Remember that line here means divide. So if I say sine A divided by cos A, I'm going to have opposite over hypotenuse divided by adjacent over hypotenuse. Uh, when we divide by a fraction, instead what we actually do to make it simpler is we multiply by its reciprocal. So we multiply by the fraction flipped. So what we get here is the hypotenuses cancel and we're left with opposite over adjacent, which is actually tan. So this thing here is proven on this sheet here. So what that means is tan is equal to sine over cos. And when they say sine over cos, because we're talking about effectively the y over the x, that becomes the slope of the line. So tangent, tan, slope, that link has been there. Hopefully you've already seen that from junior search. When we talk about tan, it's another way to say slope. I'll demonstrate that for you here on this triangle. If we were talking slope, we talk about rise over run. So if I was talking about the slope of this line here, now in green, I talk about rise over run, which is the same as opposite over adjacent. So when we talk tan, it is another way to say slope. And in this unit circle, it is a slope of OP, so O being the center, so 0, 0, and P being that point on the circle. So we'll talk about this a little bit more as we work through, but just to be aware when we're talking about tan as sine over cos, the formula itself comes from our log tables, page 13, but we've worked through our proof here now. So what I have up here in the top right hand corner is just a little bit on our quadrants is again. So we talked about that at the start of the video, but first quadrant, top right hand corner, and then it goes second quadrant, third quadrant, fourth quadrant. So here's my unit circle. And what I want to talk about is this idea of a reference angle. So every angle in the unit circle has a related reference angle and the reference angle is always acute. So the reason we work with acute angles is because that's what we've always worked with. It's much easier to work with. And if we can bring everything back to a simpler acute angle, it makes all of our questions very easy. When I talk about the first quadrant, I'm talking about this angle here. That angle is already acute. Okay, so angle is already acute. And that means the angle that we have equals the reference angle. So it's not a big deal. Everything is the same. Second quadrant. So we're actually moving like this. Now, my reference angle is actually this angle A. Our actual angle is this angle theta. So our reference angle A, that is equal to 180 degrees minus my actual angle theta. So the reference angle is this acute little angle which we find in against the positive x-axis. So in the third quadrant we have this angle theta here. It is a reflex angle. So our corresponding reference angle is this one here. So how we would work that out, A is going to be our theta take away 180 degrees. And finally, in our fourth quadrant, we have theta that is this angle here. Our reference angle is this little angle here. 
that means my reference angle is equal to 360 degrees take away theta. So we can always work out this acute angle, this reference angle, no matter what size angle we're given. So this is it in summary. So what we have here is our theta here is our little acute reference angle. And something else interesting pops up from here. And it's this idea of well, where are sine and cos and tan positive and negative? So remember my y-axis and my x-axis. X-axis is actually the cos axis and y is actually the sine. So here in the first quadrant, our x and y are both positive. So cos and sine are both positive. Remember our little formula, which was tan is equal to sine divided by cos. That means to calculate tan, it's a plus divided by a plus. So tan is also positive. So that's quadrant one. Uh, in quadrant two then, over here, we have, well, the x-axis becomes negative. So cos is actually negative. The sine is still positive. Uh, to get tan, we divide a positive by a negative, so it will be negative. So that's our second quadrant. Uh, third quadrant down here, we have, well, cos is still negative. Our sine is now also negative. Negative divided by a negative to get tan, so tan will actually be positive down in this quadrant. And our final quadrant, quadrant four, we have cos is positive, sine is negative, tan is positive divided by negative, so tan is now also negative. Okay, so we're able to see, depending on which quadrant it's in, whether sine, cos, or tan is positive, negative. So in short, we're able to do this um, C A S T. What that stands for. C stands for cos is positive, A stands for all are positive, S stands for sine is positive, and T stands for tan is positive. So there's lots of different ways where you can remember this. Um, cast, I think, is the easiest, C-A-S-T, uh, starting from the bottom and working around, but whatever way you can remember it. Uh, this can all be worked out very easily, especially using page 13, if you get stuck in your exam. So let's look at an example of using the unit circle to do some calculations. So uh, find and third form, first of all, sine of 120. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch this in. So let's say 120. Well, let me draw on this. So it's about there. So there's my 120. So 120 degrees. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm instead going to use my reference angle. So because the whole thing should be 180, that means this angle here is 60 degrees. So that means my reference angle is 60 degrees. Now, I also need to understand um, whether it should be positive or negative. So we have C is positive, so cos is positive, all are positive, sine is positive, and tan is positive. So over there, sine is positive. That means the sine of 120 is equal to the sine of uh, 60 degrees. And they said in third form, so you can put that into your calculator if you want. But what I would suggest having an opening in front of you is page 13 of your log tables. And you can go straight to sine of 60 degrees. And that gives me root 3 over 2. So then it asks for cos of 225. So remember, if it helps, this is 0 degrees and 360. This is 90. This is 180. And then this is 270. Then we did 200 to kind of confuse students. So there is my angle here. And that's 225. That means that the acute angle I want to work with is this little piece there. So it's whatever is left over after the 180. So you've 180 to there. So that means this angle is 45 degrees. That didn't come out too great. 
so let's try again 45 degrees now before I do anything I need to understand should it be positive or negative negative so cos is positive all are positive sine is positive tan is positive so that's negative so cos of 225 so it's actually going to be a negative answer of cos of 45 degrees because down in that quadrant so quadrant 3 I know that actually only tan is positive so the others must be negative so sine and cos and uh, going to my log tables page 13 cos of 45 degrees so that gives me minus 1 over root 2 if you're using a calculator it rationalizes the denominator so that will give you uh, root 2 over 2 so you should get an answer something like there if you're using your calculator uh, but I will be suggesting page 13 just for ease so now express in third form cos of negative 135 degrees. So we're talking about this negative angle again. So remember we talked about this at the very start of the video. If we're going anti-clockwise, that's a positive angle. And if we go clockwise, that is a negative angle. So let's look at where negative 135 is. So I'm moving this way and I'm going to move that way at 90 and not quite 180 so I'm gonna go I'm gonna be somewhere here okay so that's my negative one three five degrees okay so a few different ways we can work that if it's negative one three five we're actually looking at this angle here still as our um, reference angle so if that's 135 all 180 so that means a is 45 degrees in here before we move forward we need to understand is it positive or negative c a s t we're talking about tan being positive in this quadrant so cos is negative so basically cos of minus 135 degrees is the same as minus cos of 45 degrees and that gives us minus one over root two um or if you're in your calculator it will rationalize the de denominator and you get root two over two and um, you can also work with this uh, slightly differently but we're going to work specifically with the unit circle for now so part two, if sine of x is root three over, minus root three over two, find two values of x where x is between zero and 360 degrees. So the first thing you're going to do is I'm going to put in my CAST because that's all I kind of know at this point. And I'm going to identify the two areas where that could be true. So it cannot be in the first quadrant and it cannot be in the second quadrant because both of them have positive signs. So basically then where I'm talking about is I'm going to be somewhere either in the third or fourth quadrant and that's going to give me my two values. So we need to figure out now the reference angle. So sine of my reference angle A is equal to root 3 over 2. I'm still working on page 13 and actually I look at page 13 and I find that a my reference angle is equal to 60 degrees so I know I'm now talking about something in here where my reference angle is 60 degrees and I'm also talking about something here where my angle here is 60 degrees so in quadrant 3 I have 180 degrees plus 60 degrees um, so x is equal to 240 degrees. In quadrant 4, I'm going to have 360 degrees minus my reference angle, which is 60 degrees. So x is equal to 300 degrees. So there are my two possible answers. Um, if you put that straight into your calculator and did sine inverse, you're not going to get your two values. And that's what's so important about the unit circle. Um, what we've done so far up to junior third is we've kind of 
just focus primarily on the first answer. We've always dealt with acute angles. We have no such thing as a negative angle and everything is very straightforward. Now we have a lot more options and there we know a lot more. So it's important not to revert to old ways uh, if you can and really to embrace the unit circle and to understand that there are lots of different angles that actually can give you the same value. So let's look at some more examples where we're using the unit circle to find the angle. So here we're told that sine of theta is equal to a half and we're asked to find two values of theta between 0 and 360. <clears throat> the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my unit circle and for each quadrant we need to know what is positive and what is negative. So in the first quadrant, quadrant 1, they're all positive. In quadrant two, sine is positive. In quadrant three, tan is positive. And in quadrant four, cot is positive. So based on what they've given us in the question, we need to figure out which quadrants we're working with. Since sine is positive, we're working with quadrant one and quadrant two. So I'm going to just draw in a little sketch of an angle. So we have our angle here. Now in the first quadrant, we have our angle theta like this. And in the second quadrant, our angle theta, I'll do it in in red, it goes all this way over here. And we're left with this little acute angle, which we call the reference angle, and we label it as A. So in quadrant one, theta and A are going to be the same. So A is the reference angle. And in quadrant two, in order to work out theta, it'll be 180 degrees, the straight line, take away that reference angle A. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and find that angle A. So we use what we we're given at the start, which is the sine of theta is equal to a half. With the reference angle, because it's acute, because it's less than 90 degrees, we'll always just take the positive version of what we were given. So A is equal to sine inverse of a half, which if you're using page 13 in your log tables, which is much quicker than even working with your calculator, we can see at a glance that that is 30 degrees. So A, my reference angle, so let me make a little note, let A be the reference angle. That's always the little angle we use. And that's going to be really, really important because as we move through um, this video and as we move through the trigonometric section of the course, these kind of questions are going to get more challenging. So it's really, really important that you have an understanding of these more basic examples. So if I have my reference angle A, I can say, well, in the first quadrant, remember, theta is just A. So theta is equal to 30 degrees. And in the second quadrant, then, to work out theta, we're going to have 180 degrees, take away that angle A, which is 180 degrees, take away that 30 degrees, which is 150 degrees. And that gives us our two answers. So we have two possible answers for when sine of theta is equal to a half. Now, again, just a reminder, you can't use your calculator to do this because if we were to go straight to our calculator and then we just do it up here. So we would just do theta is equal to sine inverse of a half. The problem is they only give us, well, the calculator only gives us one answer and we want two values. So using just inverse, you lose that second answer. You lose the idea that actually there are two angles in each rotation that give us a positive answer. Let's look at another example. So here we are asked to find the two values of tan when cos of theta is equal to 1 over root 2. Now, the method of this is the same, just the answer at the end is going to be a little bit different. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my unit circle and again, note where everything is positive. Um, and that should be bottom, so third quadrant, tan is positive. So we have a positive cause, which means we're working in the first quadrant and in the fourth quadrant. So I'm going to sketch in my two little angles here. So here is my theta. And just like in our previous example, theta is going to be equal to that reference angle. 
In this quadrant, we have a little reference angle because theta itself is this big reflex angle. So we have quadrant one, and again, we have, well, theta will just be the reference angle. And in quadrant four, we're going to have um, theta is going to be 360 degrees, take away that reference angle. So we need to figure out that reference angle. So let A be the reference angle. So this is always the acute angle, so less than 90 degrees that we use to figure out everything else. So we can say, well, if the cos of theta is equal to 1 over root 2, the reference angle is just a positive version of whatever we were given in the question. Since this is already positive, there's no change. So A is equal to cos inverse of 1 over root 2. And that gives us an answer of 45 degrees. Again, if you've page 13 open in front of you, it's going to be so much quicker than even typing that into the calculator. So now let's go back to our quadrant. So in quadrant one, remember theta is just equal to the reference angle. So theta is equal to 45 degrees. Now, remember, we actually weren't just asked for theta in this case. We were asked for tan of theta. So now we've gotten to here, we're going to do tan of 45 degrees, so tan of theta. And again, because 45 degrees is on page 13, I'm going to use my page 13 to give me my answer. And the tan of 45 degrees is 1. And that's my first answer. So my first answer for tan. Now, the last quadrant, quadrant 4. To work out theta, it's going to be 360 degrees. Take away my reference angle. So theta is going to be 360 degrees. Take away 45 degrees, which is 300 and 15 degrees. Now we're going to work out tan. So we have tan of 315. Sorry, 315. Now, two options here. You can go straight to your calculator since 315 is not in the log tables. So you can put that into your calculator and you'll get an answer. Or you can use your unit circle. So remember that we are already working with the reference angle. The reference angle is the same as we have because it's the same angle. It's still theta. We're working with tan, but we're still talking about a reference angle of 45 degrees. So I'm going to go to my little unit circle. I'm in quadrant four and I know that actually tan is negative here. So it's going to be the same as the tan of 45 degrees, but my answer will be negative. So this actually gives me a minus one. Now, again, if that um if that is kind of too confusing or if you're finding it hard to get your head around this, the calculator does that step. So if you put that into your calculator, tan of 315, it will give you minus one. Now, there really is only two answers you can get. You can get a positive version and a negative version. And the fact that they've asked us for two values of tan theta, we should have already kind of figured out in our head, well, whatever one of our answers is, the second one will be the same with a different sign. So this is the last example we'll do um, with the this part of the unit circle. And then we'll move into the next section where we're going to look at um, what happens if we're no longer working with just these what we call parent functions. What if there is a transformation on the function and we still then have to go and solve that equation. So for this example, um, we're working slightly differently. So they've told us that the tan of A is equal to a half. Now, just with that alone, going to our unit circle, it would limit it to quadrant uh, one because it's positive or quadrant three. But they actually limited it further here by telling us what well, actually the angle is in the third quadrant. So we are working in this quadrant here. OK, so this is our angle here. Here's my um, my reference angle now. I'd be careful because the, the angle I usually use my reference angle A is actually in the question. So here is our big angle that we want. And I'm going to let X be the reference angle. So let X equal the reference angle just for this question because they've already used A. Now, this is what is interesting. They asked us to find the sine of A in third form. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to see, well, look, can I work with um, that angle A is tan of A in the log tables? And you can take a quick look and actually it's not. So what that tells us is it's not one of the angles that we're used to. Now, you might think, right, but what if I go to my log table or what if I go to my calculator and I do the tan inverse of a half? Wouldn't that give me the answer? Well, the issue is we get a decimal. So I'm getting by 26.565 and they want the answer in third form. So this is obviously not the way they want us to approach it. So this is what we're going to do. The first thing we're going to do is look at sine of A and look at the fact that we're in the third quadrant. And since we're in the third quadrant, the sine of A is going to have to be negative. That's really important. Now, once I have any of my ratios, so sine, cos, or tan, I can work out the other two. It's not something we do a huge amount in the Leaving Cert course, but we can do it. Often when it's asked, and we've seen it even asked at Junior Cert, it's very much a question on its own. So how we do it is we do a little sketch. So I'm going to draw out a little right angle triangle, and I'm going to mark this as my angle A which makes this side opposite, this adjacent, and this hypotenuse. So remember we were given tan of A is equal to a half. The formula for tan is opposite over adjacent. So what we know is we know the ratios of the sides. We don't know exactly that the sides are one and two, but we know they're in the ratio one is to two, which is absolutely perfect. That's all we need. That is like a simplified version of any bigger numbers. So maybe it was two over four, maybe it was uh, three over six or so on. Um, and that is not going to be an issue. And that's linked very much to the idea of similar triangles. Now, I want to get sine of A, which is actually going to be negative and then something over something. And that something over something is opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite part is fine because that's actually just one. So it's the hypotenuse piece that we're missing. So we're going to go back to the triangle and I'm going to actually label it for Pythagoras. Because if I have two sides, I can use Pythagoras to work out the third. So c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. c squared is equal to two squared plus one squared. Working that through, we end up with the square root of five. So we end up, this is one over root five. And the key idea for this answer is that it's not just one over root five, it's a negative one over root five, since A, we know, is in the third quadrant. So hopefully at this point, you have a much better understanding of how to work with the unit circle and why. So really that idea that there are two angles in each 360 degrees that give us the same answer for sine, the same answer for cos and the same answer for tan. So every unit circle, really what it's telling us is there's two positive answers and two negative answers for each. So we're going to build on this and go slightly deeper. The examples we have been looking at, they're good grounding and we have sometimes seen them as part of functions questions. But more likely, if we're asked to solve trigonometric equations, we're going to be asked ones more like these upcoming examples. This is very much linked to functions. Now, I'm going to touch on the trigonometric functions very briefly here, but I'll link below a video that looks at the functions in a lot more detail and specifically the function transformations. So I'm going to break this down into a step by step. Now, often students um, who have a very good understanding of how the unit circle works, they can do this very quickly and they don't need as much structure. So if you want to just go and look at the examples, you can skip through this part. Um, but if you really are struggling with what do I do next, there's too much going on. Start with this very, very stringent step by step process. And as you become more familiar with the types of questions and as you get practice or as you do more practice, you may find yourself working a little bit more efficiently. 
So the first step is making sure that there's no coefficient of sine, cos and tan. And I suppose sometimes we really, things that we would do in algebra automatically, we don't see as quickly in trigonometry because sine of 3x like I have here, that's the unknown. And we kind of focus in on the 3x and we forget about everything else. But what we have here is a 2 sine of 3x. And the fact that there's a 2 in front of it, we can't solve it straight away. We have to get rid of that coefficient as we would do if it was like, you know, let's take a 5y. To get y on its own, we get rid of that 5. We divide both sides of the equation by 5. So we're going to do the same thing here. We divide both sides by any coefficients. So here's an example. 2 sine of 3x is equal to minus root 3. And that becomes sine of 3x is equal to minus root 3 over 2. Now, we've only really seen one example where that is needed, but it's something to be aware of. The next thing you want to be aware of is how many answers am I expecting? Because that's really, really key. If you have in your head from the start, how many answers am I expecting? Then you'll know when you've got to the end of the question. So the number of answers will be two times the number in front of the angle. So here I have a sign of 3x. So that will give me six answers. And I suppose, why? Why do we have more answers? And this is the reasoning behind it. When we have a function, OK, so this is a very basic function here. And I have this, say this is a sine x like this. Now, this is in radians, but they just haven't put in the pi. So you can see that's just a little bit over three. So by 3.14, that's pi. That is two pi, or if you think in degrees, 360 degrees. So if we start, and the start is always at the y-axis, we can see it goes up, down, and back up. So let me draw on this so you can see it. So I'm starting here. I go up, down, and back up, and that's where it ends. This length here is known as the period of the function. And what we can think of the three as, so that coefficient, that tells us um, it's either one over the period, if you want to think like that, but probably a more intuitive way to think of it is how many times it rotates in 360 degrees. So for us, um, if this marks 360 degrees or 2 pi, if you think in radians, it rotates once it does one full rotation so this will be like sine of x and it has a coefficient of one here that we don't really talk about we don't really put it in and that means it has one rotation now when i put a three in front of it so let me change my color so this is sine of 3x. Now that 3 is important because it is a transformation of the function and what it does is, oh sorry let me get rid of this colour, so what it does is it speeds up um, the oscillation or how quickly the function rotates. So let me find, so this point here that's 360 degrees or 2 pi. So it rotates a lot quicker OK, so it goes up, down. There's one rotation, two rotations, three rotations. So this has three rotations in 360 degrees. So it goes much quicker. So this means we get more answers. So usually, right, go back to this one, we get two answers in this one. Okay, so there's two answers in this section here. Now, we're going to have two answers in each rotation, but since there are three rotations, we're going to get two answers and another two answers and another two answers. And that's where we get that idea of six answers. Now, um, when we're working with these, it, it's not a huge, like this step here, it's more to help you understand it. It's not really part of the question to go, I know how many answers I'm going to have, but it does make life so much easier. It's so important that you can understand what are we talking about? Uh, how does that coefficient of the angle, how does that affect 
um, this wholesome because all of our previous examples were like this first one here. We were just using unit circle. There was always two answers. We're now moving into this. So what impact does that have? Now, depending on your understanding, it has very little impact. And I'm going to show you some of the things that I suggest the students do um, to try and stop common mistakes. So this is what I would recommend. Now, you may or may not have learned to do it this way. Um, again, it depends on how your understanding is. I would always replace that double or triple angle. In this case, I'm talking about 3x. So I replace that with a single angle. So what that allows us to do is to treat the sum like our unit circle question for the start of it. Why I suggest this, this extra step, and I'm definitely not an advocate for doing extra steps. I'm, I definitely do things the most efficient way possible. But the reason I, I would suggest students put this in is because often I see the division by three, and that will come clear later on, but I see that happening too early. And I suppose it's just a natural instinct. When we have 3x equals something, we'll get x straight away. We divide everything by three. But it's really important that that division is the last step. So I find that this takes away the temptation to do that division too early. So look. This, like I said, if you don't follow this really stringent steps, you can still do it and still do it right. But this is, um, if, if you find you're not getting the right answer, specifically because of the rotations and the division, replacing your angle, so like in this case, your triple angle um, or your double angle or whatever we have with just a single, like so a theta, um, it makes life so much easier. So then this part, much um this is pretty much what we've been working on you draw your unit circle you decide which quadrant you're in so here's my lovely unit circle so i have i do cast c-a-s-t but whatever way you want to remember it sine is negative so we're dealing with these two quadrants because i can see my negative here and then i sketch it out and i let a little reference angle here so my re remember my reference angle always hangs off the x-axis so i have quadrant one quadrant two quadrant three and quadrant four so what we're going to do then is try and work out what that angle a is a because it's acute will always be positive so all i've done here is get sine of a is equal to root three over two I haven't, I suppose sometimes students think, oh, I'm changing my sign. That's not what it is. I take the positive. So if it's already positive, I don't do anything. It's I take the positive because A, that reference angle is acute. So if I have the sine of A is equal to root 3 over 2, that's one that's in the log tables. So sine of root 3 over 2, that ends up giving me 60 degrees. So I then come along and I go to my diagram. So here's a little. Um, here's a little diagram that gives us an indication of how do we calculate for each of our quadrants. So again, here's quadrant one, here's quadrant two, quadrant three and quadrant four. So for us, for that little example, we were dealing with quadrant three. So our quadrant three is 180 plus that reference angle. So remember, I just said the reference angle is 60 degrees. So it's 180 plus 60. And then for here, the 360 degrees minus A, and that's going to be 360, take away 60, which is 300. So then step six, this is, I suppose, this is the piece that I find the theta comes in helpful because what I find here is if we talk about theta is equal to 180 plus, so I'm looking here, sorry, so theta is equal to 180 plus 60, that's 240. And students leave that as 240. If that was 3x equals 240, I find students straight away around come and go x equals 80 degrees. And that gets us one answer, but it means the other answers are incorrect. So you just need to be careful. So step six is then, right, go back to the start. We want six answers. Here in step five, we've gotten two answers. The two answers that we have gotten are 240 degrees from quadrant three and 300 degrees from quadrant four. So where are our other four answers coming from? And the answer is rotations. So I'm going to add on a rotation and then a second rotation. 
So we end up with our angles. Um, so I end up with 240 is one angle for theta. Now this is all for theta. For here, we got a 600. Here, we get a 960. Um, for our fourth quadrant, because I do them in columns. So this first column is all about the third quadrant. Here we have 300 degrees. Here we have 660 degrees. And we here we have 1,020 degrees. Now they seem really, really high, especially if we think the questions really will generally ask us for answers between 0 and 360. So now that we have our six answers for theta, but remember theta wasn't what we were asked. We were actually asked x. So we have instead of theta equals 240, 3x equals 240. So then x must be 80 degrees. Um, three Instead of theta, so well, really theta equals 3x. So theta equals 3x, which equals 600. Um, so x is actually 200 degrees. And for the last one, 3x is equal to 960. And again, then we do the division. So what happens is the division happens after we add the rotations and that's that's key really uh, for quadrant four uh, 3x is equal to 300 so x is equal to 100 if you don't do this you'll cop very quickly because you'll find your answers are just too big they're going to be bigger than 360 so this is 220 and then 3x is equal to 1020 degrees so then x is equal to 340. So we have our six answers here. Now I'm going to work through these steps again as an example, but just I suppose sometimes when we talk about what to do, it's hard to see it if we don't have numbers. So if you're finding the final answer was a struggle for you, maybe working with these steps will be beneficial. So here is an example from the 2018 paper. We have the cos of 2x is equal to minus root 3 over 2, where 0 is between x and 360 degrees. So when you're working in degrees, these questions are obviously much, much easier because we've you know, been taught to think in degrees since quite a young age. But um, I will do some examples with radians as well. So I'm going to follow the step by steps here, um, but ignore the step by steps if you're kind of just want to work with this as an example. So make sure there is no coefficient and that's the coefficient of sine, cos or tan. So in this case, is there a coefficient of cos? And the answer is no. So there's no coefficient. Number of answers, there is going to be six. So the fact that it's two or sorry, two X means there's going to be four answers. So two by two. So we're going to get four answers at the end. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make life a little bit easier for myself. And I'm going to write this as cos theta is equal to minus root three over two. OK, so I let two X equal theta. So the next thing I'm going to do is, well, which quadrants are we talking about? So here is my C, A, S and T. We have sine is negative. So this is quadrant two and quadrant three. So we're talking about quadrant two and quadrant three. OK, so we're here and we're here. Now I always fill in my little A for my reference angle. So find the reference angle A. OK, so we have the cos of A, the acute little angle will be the positive version of whatever we started with. So here it's just root 3 over 2. Um, and again, I like to use page 13 for this. Page 13 should work most of the time. And I end up with A is equal to 30 degrees. So that is my reference angle. So I can kind of get a sense now when it's drawn out how I will work out my theta. So my theta, one of my thetas is here. That's the quadrant two one. And then the other theta is there. So I'm going to use my reference angle to find my two answers. So in the second quadrant and in the third quadrant. So in the second quadrant, I'm going to have um, theta is equal to 180 degrees minus A. So theta is equal to 180 degrees minus 30 degrees, which is 150. And then, oh, 
In the third quadrant, it's going to be 180 plus theta. Now, sometimes students kind of feel, do I need to learn that off by heart? But get really good at looking at your diagram that we have in step three to understand it. If you have your A labeled right and you know where your theta is, and I kind of labeled it, but it gets a bit messy, then you should be able to figure it out because you would have been doing these sums since junior cert. Just because they're now part of a harder question doesn't mean that you just have forgotten how to do them so be really mindful of that um so i end up here with theta is equal to 210 degrees so there are my two answers now i want four answers so go back to that at the start i said i wanted four answers so i'm going to add rotations so my first answer was 150 so my second answer is going to be 150 plus a 360 degree rotation which is 510 degrees that is all the second quadrant so i like to do little columns so this is my second quadrant column and this is like my third quadrant column and um, you don't have to you can lay it out whatever way you want this is just the way i think makes sense um, and helps to keep track of everything so again, I have 210 degrees is one answer. So my second answer I get when I add 360 degrees and that gives me 570. Now, final step, now I've written over this, apologies, is to sub back in my angle. So there's my 510, I'll write it there. So what that means is go back to step two and actually we said that theta was equal to 2x. So 2x is equal to 150 degrees. So x must be 75 degrees. And that gives me my final answer, number one, because <laughs> remember I need four. And then the next one is well, 2x is equal to 510. So x is equal to 255. So that is a second answer. I have 2x is equal to 210. So x is equal to 105. So that's the third answer. And sometimes you can do them in order, like you can go quadrant two, quadrant three, then go back to quadrant two and go back to quadrant three. Order here isn't terribly important as long as you get all four answers. The final one is 570, so x is 285 degrees, and that's our four answers. So these kind of questions, although I would see these as a, a nice question because the method is generally the same, students really, really struggle with these. And the areas, like I said, that I think students really struggle with is that idea of the rotation that you may be adding it too late and doing the division too early, kind of step six and step seven. So that step two that we have of replacing the angle, that may be helpful. Step three, step four, step five, they're all just what we were working on in the earlier examples in this video. So let's do another one and let's work it a little bit quicker. So first thing I'm going to do is the number of answers. So the number of answers, that's the square root of three over two. The number of answers that I have here is six because I have sine of three X. So every sign X has two answers. The three tells me I'll have three times as many because there'll be three rotations. Second thing is I'm going to replace it with an angle. So actually I'm going to work with the sine of theta is equal to root three over two. It's positive. Um, and that is let three x equal theta. So the next thing is, well, which quadrants are we talking about? So here's my C-A-S-T. We have sine is positive. So we're working in quadrant one and quadrant two. So let's sketch that out. Quadrant one, so in that case, theta is equal to the reference angle. And quadrant two, so let me, so we're talking about quadrant one and quadrant two so we're going to find the reference angle so the reference angle sine of a is equal to root three over two from page 13 that gives me 60 degrees 
So now I'm going to use that reference angle to find two answers, so quadrant one and quadrant two. So theta is just going to be 60 degrees in quadrant one. In quadrant two, it's going to be 180 degrees. Take away my 60 degrees, which is 120. Let me just quickly show where that came from. We have, oh, We'll get a red. So there is my theta that we're talking about. We can see it starts um, at the positive part of the x-axis, comes over to the second quadrant, and that red angle theta I've just drawn in, plus the alpha should add up to 180. So that's how we got it. So now let's add in some rotations. So we need um, a good few rotations here. So if theta is equal to 60, then the second one is 60 plus 360, which gives me 420. And the last one is going to be 60 plus 720, or you can do 420 plus 360, whatever way you want to get to 780. So there will be three in each quadrant because there's six answers in total. Here I have 120, then my first rotation is 120 plus 360, which is 480. And then 120. I like to go 120 and then add in two rotations. But you can do 480 plus 360 and you'll get the same thing. And we get 840 degrees. Final step is go back to step two and sub back in the original angle. So we have 3x equals 60. So that gives me x equals 20. 3x equals 420. And x equals 140. And then final one here, 3x is equal to 780. x is equal to 260. Over here, we have 3x is equal to 120. So x equals 40, 3x is equal to 480, and x equals 160. And final answer, 3x is equal to 840, and that gives me x is equal to 280. And there are our lovely six answers. Again, a bit of practice on these, and they do take practice. But first of all, make sure you're very, very clear on the unit circle piece. And then all we're really doing is working with those rotations to get more answers because of that transformation of the function. So the last example I'm going to do is one that asks for the general solution, and it's also one that works in radians. Now, we're going to work with the same steps, but we're going to change it as we get to step six. So what happens is because we want what's called a general solution. So this is basically a formula that will give us any answer that we want. The general solution, we've met it, or you may have met it already with um sequences and series, the idea of like a general formula or a general term. So it just means there's going to have a letter in it. So it's more of a formula that we can use. So effectively, we've been working between 0 and 360 in the last two examples. So we've been limited in how many answers we can have. But actually, if we had no limit on it, there is an infinite number of answers. So that's where the general solution comes in. The difference is really with the added rotations. So when we add our rotations, we add a general number of rotation because we have some number of rotations rather than a specific number. So we won't know how many answers we want. Uh, but the method is pretty much the same. So step six, instead of adding in all the rotations, so add in one rotation, two rotations, and so on, we add in one general rotation. Then we do exactly as we had done before. We replace our angle. Step eight is to find the actual solution. So often then they ask us to find the solutions. And I'll show you how we can use the general solution to find the actual answers. Now, general solution will always work. So if you like this method, you are welcome to use it on the previous two examples as well. But it tends to be one we reserve for when we are asked to do it. So this example is from the 2010 paper, 
um, which was the very, very start of Project Math. So it says solve the equation cos of 3 beta is equal to a half, where beta is an element of R. So there's no limitation here, and that is the general solution. Now, I would expect at this point, if they were to ask that, that they would talk about this as the general solution. Um, and when we've seen it asked in mock papers, they have asked, find the general solution, and hence, find the answers and um, theta is in radians so that's a little bit different as well but I'm going to show you some tricks um, or some suggestions that I have for dealing with radians if you are not feeling 100% comfortable with them yet so first thing I'm going to do is we're going to look at is there a coefficient so there isn't it's cos of three beta number of answers well the thing is there is going to be no specific number of answers because we're talking about all possible answers which is that general solution which is written up here so it's not like our previous questions where we're going to have six answers if we were asked this between 0 and 360 or 0 and 2 pi since it's radians yes it will be six Second thing is replace the angle. Now, I usually use theta, but since they've used theta, I'm going to use x. So I usually use one or the other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let 3 theta equal x. Um, so cos of x is equal to a half. So look, it's up to you. I usually go between if they use theta, I use x. If they use x, I use theta. Um, but you just want to replace it. Get rid of that three for the moment so we don't do any division too early. Then we need to look which quadrants. So our quadrants, we're looking where cause is positive. So going to my little quadrants, cause is positive in the first quadrant and in the third quadrant. And I'm going to sketch out my little angles. My first quadrant is lovely and easy because my angle A, that reference angle, is going to be equal to X. While in the third quadrant, now I'm going to do a little bit of work on this here. So in quadrant one, we have um, X, that angle is just going to be equal to A, which that's fine. And in quadrant four, we would have... Um, now I'm thinking in degrees, I know this question is in radians, but I'm thinking in degrees, x would be 360 degrees, take away that reference angle. Once I have kind of my thoughts put down in degrees, you can then think, well, what would that be in radians? Well, 360 is 2 pi, so it's going to be 2 pi take away whatever our reference angle is. So that's fine, that reference angle. So again, reference angle is always positive. So it's one over two. And again, I love that page 13. I never have to pick up my calculator. And it really, really, really is helpful when we're thinking in radians because it gives us both answers without even having to touch this, um, to touch the mode on your calculator. So I go to my page 13, cause of what angle is equal to a half? The answer is pi over three in radians. But here's a little trick that I would do um, from the time I start these until students become a lot more comfortable. And that is to keep the degrees as part of the question because we're going to think naturally in degrees. You may never get to the point where radians are as natural as degrees because you may not have enough time with them you know depending on when you meet trigonometry so I would always suggest you know keep the the degrees there as like a backup kind of you know your translation if you will so now that we have our angle which is pi over three or 60 degrees we want to work our two answers so these are the two quadrants so we have the first quadrant and the second quadrant so for oh I'm in the wrong quadrant. So it's the first quadrant and let me get rid of this. It should be the fourth quadrant because cause is positive. So let me get rid of this for a second. Apologies. Now, so we're in the fourth quadrant. And we've just worked out that this was going to be, and I have a theta instead of an x. So this is going to be x equals a, which we'd already put the thought in back when we were doing that unit circle. And then x is going to be 2 pi minus a. Now, again, if you want to keep working in radians and degrees, that's fine. So pi over 3, which again is 60 degrees. And then for here, 
it's going to be 2 pi minus pi over 3. You can put that into the calculator. It'll be fine. It gives us 5 pi over 3. And if you want to think in degrees, that was 360. So x was 360, take away 60, which is 300 degrees. So just kind of, while you're working, you may not do this in the exam, but while you're doing your practice, it might be helpful to become more familiar with your radians. Now, up to now, there's been absolutely no difference in the fact that we've been dealing with a general solution instead of a specific answer is between 0 and 360. This is where the change happens. We're going to add in what's called a general rotation. So instead of me adding on 2 pi or 360 degrees, I'm going to add in what is um, general. So it is x is equal to pi over 3 and the rotation is 2n pi where n is some number so i could sub in whatever number i want zero would be zero rotations n is one will give me one rotation and so on and this is five pi over three and again plus a general rotation if you were thinking in terms of degrees so this would be 60 plus um 360n so there would still be a three there would still be an n and that's how it would look 300 plus 360n if we were working in degrees. You could be asked this in degrees as well. So that's our general rotation. Let me highlight that so you can see it. Our 2n pi. Now you can do that in any order. 2 pi n is fine or n 2 pi. I like 2n pi. Then the step seven, we're kind of back on track. We're going to sub back in our original angle. So remember, this was actually three theta is equal to pi over three plus two n pi. And here three theta is equal to five pi over three plus two n pi. Now we're going to divide everything by three. So again, you can use your calculator to help you with this. But pi over three divided by three ends up as pi over nine plus 2n pi over 3. Now, if you want, you can combine that into one fraction. That's fine. There's no need. So it's pi over 9 plus 2n pi over 3. And the last thing you want to do is where n equals 0, 1, 2, dot, dot, dot. So it kind of gives you where, what we can sub in for n. Now, that gives all the possible answers. So like, what is my answer? Well, this is the two answers. Um, and they're both general. So both of them represent an infinite number of answers because I could sub in n is 0, n is 1, n is 2, or any whole positive number or 0 in there. A follow-on question might be to find all the answers between 0 and 2 pi. If that was part of it, we could take these two formulae and sub in n is 0 then n is 1, and then n is 2. So question 2, find the general solutions that satisfy the equation 2 cos of 3 theta is equal to minus 1, and hence solve the equation in the domain theta is between 0 and 2 pi. So there's a lot going on in this question, so let's start off with what we have. So 2 cos of 3 theta is equal to minus 1. So the cos of 3 theta is equal to minus a half. Now, to ensure we don't do any division before we need to, the easiest thing to do is to let x equal to 3 theta. So instead, we're going to look at this as the cos of x is equal to minus 1 over 2. Now, um, because it's negative, we're going to use instead a reference angle a, which is equal to a half. So now we get that a is actually equal to Using page 13, we get pi over uh, 3. Now, that is actually 60 degrees, but they have asked us here clearly to work in radians. Now, I've used page 13 to get pi over 3. However, if you want to use your calculator, that's fine. Just make sure it's in radian mode. So now I'm going to go to my um, unit circle, and I have my C, A, S, and my t. So here are the two places where cos is negative. So my two places where cos are negative is my second quadrant and my third quadrant here. So now I'm going to work through and figure out these two solutions. So um, 
coming back. I know that if I have this angle here is pi over 3. Um, I have an angle here that's also pi over 3. And to work it out in the second quadrant, I work with the fact that this is 2 pi, this is pi over 2, this is pi, and this is 3 pi over 2. So my second quadrant is pi minus pi over 3, which is 2 pi over 3. The next one is my third quadrant. And my third quadrant, the angle is here, pi over 3. So this one is pi plus pi over 3, which is 4 pi over 3. So that's my first two values of x. Okay, so that's x and x. So x, I'm going to put it up here, is 2 pi over 3. And x is also equal to 4 pi over 3. Now, if I want to turn that to a general solution, what I would say is 2 pi over 3 plus n times 2 pi. And here, x is equal to 4 pi over 3 plus n times 2 pi, where n is an element of 0, 1, 2, blah, 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 all the way up. So that's accounting for all its rotations. And that's my general solution of x. However, they want our general solution of theta. So we have 3 theta is equal to this, 2 pi over 3 plus n 2 pi. And 3 theta is equal to 4 pi over 3 plus n 2 pi. Now, to get the general solution of theta, we're going to divide everything across by 3. So that's 9 plus n 2 pi over 3 and theta is equal to 4 pi over 9 plus n 2 pi over 3 and that is my general solution for theta okay sorry now try that again so that's my general solution for theta now uh, they want then specifically the solutions between 0 and 2 pi. So any angle has 2 in the, in the majority of cases, um, apart from a few exceptions, it has 2 angles uh, between 0 and 2 pi. Because we've now put in a 3 theta, there is now 3 by 2, which is 6 solutions. So let's go with it. Let's first of all look when n is equal to 0. So theta is equal to 2 pi over 9 and theta is equal to 4 pi over 9. When n is equal to 1, theta is equal to 2 pi over 9 plus uh, 2 pi over 3, which would give us um, 8 pi over 9. Yeah. And here we would have um, 4 pi over 9 plus 2 pi over 3 which gives me um, 10 pi over 9, 6, yeah, perfect. And then the last two will come from n equals 2. So theta is equal to 2 pi over 9 plus 2 times 2 pi over 3. And that should give me 14 pi over 9. And the last answer for theta is going to be 4 pi over 9 plus 2 times 2 pi over 3 and that equals to 16 pi over 9. So there are my six solutions for theta which link up between um, 0 and 2 pi.